the only losers are the people who don't try at all. Like, and, you know, because everyone who tries something wins something. They win experience. They win the next step toward their goals. is Sarah Dici and welcome to Collective. This is the spot for filmmaking contests to push your limits as a filmmaker to win prizes, win grants, and also collaborate with the best. So I'm here with this month's resident pro, Maddie Brown. Welcome. Hi, nice to I'm meet so you. I'm so excited to have you. And I would just like to start this off by saying you hold the record of the most Vimeo staff picks, which in the filmmaking <laughs> world, that's a big deal. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's a big deal. So tell me a little bit about yourself and your work. My name is Maddie, and uh, I'm from Seattle. And I, I like make a ton of different kinds of, you know, filmmaking, uh, like, you, you know, pieces. And so it's anything from like your know, documentaries to sh shorts to like art films to commercials to travel films. And so I'm kind of all over the place with variety. what I like to do. Yeah, exactly. And they like often kind of are pretty slow and then build up to a big you know, climax where you almost can't you know, take it anymore, that it's such a swelling of like emotion that, that, that you get kind of worked up by then. That's kind of my goal at the end of most of my pieces. Yeah, and <laughs> something when I was uh, kind of doing research and watching your stuff, I loved that you talked about some of your videos in a way of like, no, it's not a montage, but I'm just trying to describe an emotion that I feel and try to describe exactly. that through video, sound, words. And so you're not just a um, video creator, but you also write. So you have a lot of different yeah. tools in the toolbox, right? And lately I've been doing a lot of writing and you know, going more into like you know, narratives and uh, you know, I, I think doing like you know, travel pieces and stuff kind of really helped me learn the, the like, craft of like, editing and shooting and sound design and music and stuff like that and how they all mix like into one like a beautiful piece and then the next step was the writing aspect so that's kind of where I, I started to gear toward in the, in the last couple of years um, and actually I've been kind of you know like like you're hiding away for the last few months doing nothing but writing so it's nice to like you know break away and kind of do like you know like helping others kind of you know, know kind of the sort of like ins and outs of like the kind of troubles I, I, I've had, you know, love like you doing it and how that sort of like inspired me to kind of work through a lot of those. So. Yeah. And I love what you said right before this when, you know, sometimes you might have anxiety about going to downtown Seattle, but when you get on set, yeah. you're ready to direct, you're ready because it's your element. And Definitely. I think that's what's so special about art in general is when you find something that you click with and you work Definitely. at it, um, it's not just a release, but it's so cool to be able to um, make art and also make it in a professional sense. Totally. And so that's why um, I think collective is so cool because it's not only an opportunity, uh, these challenges to win prizes, but people get to hone their craft. There's something special exactly. about each contest. They can have an extra tool in their toolbox to, you know, one step further, hopefully to doing this full time, which I guess that's totally. the dream, right? Totally, that's totally. <laughs> um, so I kind of want to kick off. I'm excited to chat all the things with you, but I want to kick off with your contest. So tell me a little bit about it. What can we expect? I think you've prepared a script. Yeah, okay. so we kind of, like uh, we like you kind of created this uh, script to, to like screen like you know, challenge where uh, I, I write a pretty vague script. I don't want to be like specific. So it really kind of, you know, pulls anyone into really some like harsh rest rest restrictions or whatever. But uh, so I have a script that I wrote where I like took all the like the like a a action lines out, reworked all the like you know, dialogue. So it's pretty vague and they need to, to like, you know, take at least, you know, 10 of the lines out of there and create their own film, whether it's comedy or horror action or whatever, uh, just to like challenge them into making a piece that really they feel a lot like you like you're passionate about and stuff and just so we know that it's for the for this like this like your piece there's that like there's one little guideline of just using like intent of the lines basically um, yeah. so you have a lot of ambiguous 
lines that you can use in the script and um, people can download it now at collective.lacy.com. You have to sign up and join the contest in order for the script to be revealed. But I think it's ambiguous enough to where, just like you say, you can do whatever you want with yeah, it. Yeah, totally. Would you, what type of scripted stuff do you traditionally do and maybe how would you approach this contest if you were doing it? Write down a bunch of ideas just a, like a like a like like a, a whole like a bunch of blurbs. Just start outlining different ideas and making sure it has a, like a beginning, middle, and end. And you know you, you want to try to hook people right away. And if you don't hook, to make sure that, that your like end is really like you know pretty gripping and just kind of playing with like people's emotions and knowing uh, how to treat your, 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 yourself as your own audience and making sure that you're not going to be bored with what you're what you're making in the in the long run. Cuz so. if you're bored with it, then exactly. other people are going to be exactly. bored with it, exactly. right? We're really taking the training wheels off, right? <laughs> yeah, totally. And so people uh, not only have to worry about the how the script is being portrayed with actors, um, but also keep it under 2 minutes. Yeah, that's that's another keep part it, of it compelling, keep it 2 minutes, totally. um, also figure out the location, what are you shooting on? And, you know, with Gear, a lot of people say, gear doesn't matter. Um, but I think for me, what I found too is uh, gear keeps things exciting, right? Yeah. And so I'm wondering, do you have like a super fancy setup? Do you rent out reds for big shoots? So, I mean, I shoot on a lot of different things. So it, it kind of depends on the project really. But uh, often for like short films, like, you know, narratives that I really want to make it c c cinematic, I'll like use a lot like an Ari, like many of the Alexa or like a red or something. And, um, but if I want to like experiment and really try to test stuff, I'll do a little love like a GH4, even the like uh, iPhone. I'll love to shoot an iPhone too. And I think, you know, those having a smaller like you know, camera will like allow you to do a lot more, more nimbly and stuff like that, and you can get into places easier. And I, d I don't think people who who like you know, don't like have a lot of money should be afraid to do something on like a cheaper camera when they're like worried that they're that they're going to compete against like an Ari or something. At the core, it's the story. Exactly. Right? Yeah. So you see films these days being made on like iPhones now, and those films. Oh, went there was a horror film recently shot on with an iPhone six. It was in the theater. Shocking. So, so, so I don't think people should be afraid of what gear they have and what they yeah. don't have. I think that's one of the things that I that I like really kind of like push out there is to make sure that because I started on a camera that took tapes up until like maybe wow. five years ago. I, I was using tapes. a camera. Yeah, <laughs> it took tapes. I have a whole bunch of tapes from just five years ago. I think yeah. more than half of my staff picks on uh, a Vimeo are from that that wow. little like a crappy camera mm -hmm. that took tapes. You know, when you have expensive equipment, a lot of times you want to treat it precious. Definitely. But it's a tool, Definitely. right? Definitely. It's, it's not a baby. Mm -hmm. It's It's... <laughs> It's a tool. You, you could like, probably drop it a couple times. You'll exactly. Be fine. <laughs> yeah. Totally. Um, and then I think with like uh, more ex more expensive cameras, then you get it takes more time to get things ready, and you know or just the process of the body of the camera, right. then the lenses, then the batteries, and then everything right. else, and then it just becomes this massive like transformer looking yeah. thing, <laughs> yeah. you know. And uh, so that's so, definitely something to aspire to, right? Definitely. So right now you. Don't need that. I mean, that's another thing is I don't want people to be afraid to like, of like editing, of shooting, and then the whole process. And if they're right. doing it on their own, I don't want them to be afraid of like, oh gosh, I have to shoot this. I don't really know how to shoot or right. do this kind of stuff. And then editing is another big thing that I don't know how to do. And I mean, you know, people at um, Vimeo actually are like, how the hell does this guy know how to edit? Like, yeah. because I don't, I just learned it by hitting buttons and trial and error and like, oh, this thing does this and this thing does this. Right. And my like edits are now so intricate, like frame by frame. So I, it's a journey. I think that's yeah. that's important, right? You yeah. you start with knowing absolutely nothing. It's scary, exactly. but it's a journey and we're all in it together. And I really like stick to that thing where 
if you, the only losers are the people who don't try at all. Like, and you know, because everyone who tries something wins something. They win experience. They win the next step toward their goals and stuff like that. And it's just that, like, you know, continuing to do it more and more, which is why this whole like, 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 like the thing is is such a great like you know contest. Yeah. You know, because uh, it really kind of challenges people to kind of. Step out of their comfort zone and to try something new. You know, but you know, like you people don't know where to start, and so if you just give them kind of a nudge and say, "Hey, try this little like this little test for 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 yourself," you know, just to see what you can do, and then and then in the end, you look back on it and you think, "Okay, maybe I'll do this differently." This and then right. and then it moves you on to the next piece. Yeah. You know, so it's um, a learning process, and then hey you might win some prizes. Exactly. Totally. <laughs> so what's awesome is we have $10,000 worth of prizes, a couple of the prizes, MacBook Pro, Black Magic Pocket Cinema 4K, which is crazy. I got to test that camera recently and it's beautiful. So the fact that, you know, the winner will win that, that's epic. Um, and so the contest opens May 6th. It closes June 10th. That's when the judging begins. And then the winner is announced June 17th. Um, so you're going to be watching these yeah, and, and, and judging them. And so do you know the uh, specific criteria or maybe some, uh, you know, some things that people can really aim for? Well, I think one of the main things is, you know, just, you know, creativity. Like, what can you just do with just the things around your house, the resources that you have. Like, I'm really just excited to see how how people turn this into something that means something to them. And I, so I think the big thing is like is like you know creativity, like imagination sort of thing, and then story as well. Like, what's the story? Like, what are you trying to say? Like, wh what do you want to say to the world? Kind of a thing with this. And I know it's restricted to a certain script, but I think. Uh, people can still s have their voice in that and still kind of get through what they want to say uh, as a filmmaker, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, perfect. So sign up now, collective.lacy.com. I'm so excited to start seeing these submissions roll in. Um, and then I definitely want to dive in into more just you as a filmmaker and kind of what makes you tick and the the projects that you've done. And so right now you're actually writing a feature film. Yeah, I, I just wrote my second feature film. And oh, okay, I've been, it's your second, okay. Yeah, so I, I've, I'm like, I've been kind of hiding away for about six or seven months writing, which is like, I got sick in the process because I was just like, just sitting alone in a hole writing nonstop, which is not probably the best way to go about writing because you, you, in order to write, you need to live life too, I think. And that's something that I'm learning in the process because I'm, you know, I mean, everyone's learning constantly. And so I'm learning these, these kind of processes. And just from this script to my last script, like, I've learned a lot just in doing that. And I've loved doing like, like, you know, travel films and like commercials and stuff like that. It's something that I've, that I've like, you know, really got my groove into in the last like f f five or six years. And, um, and then I just like, in my head, it just like, I need to tell narrative stories. It's like, I need to s have my own voice in the feature film world and what I want to say to the world. And, you know, there's, uh, I want to make films I want to see in the theaters, you know what I mean? Yeah. That sort of thing. And so that's something that I've been uh, kind of gearing toward. And now that I've kind of just like really learned editing and shooting and uh, like, you, you know, directing and I mean, all the different little aspects I've kind of, uh, now I feel like I'm, I'm able as like a director and I'm really like, like, looking confident to take on a bigger project. A feature film is such a big project. Exactly. And for what I do, I'm so used to pumping out two to three videos a week. It's a constant chaos. It's um, you, you want to strive for quality, but quantity is a, a big thing in the v social video world, right? With YouTube, Instagram, Twitter. And I know you did uh, commercial videos. You know, you're always trying to put your best foot forward with what you put on Vimeo. W what was the biggest learning curve? Maybe shifting from, okay, I'm gonna take a month to make a video, and now I'm gonna take six months to just write it. Was that hard? Um, <laughs> or is it relaxing? It scared the crap out of me. Yeah. I was really scared. I just decided, you know, after doing a few shorts, last year the uh, Sp uh, Spirit Awards gave me a like you know, grant, 
and uh, they like asked me to tell this, tell a story through my eyes of my own city. And so I showed Seattle in the way that I saw it. And I always hide in the parks and I don't go to downtown and I kind of see the, the like the like more like a native aspect of it. And so I wanted to tell this story through a lens of like an elder native woman and how you see the the um, the um, city as it used to be, you know, and a uh, city that I fell in love with. And so after that, I I got a lot of, you know, producers down in like Los Angeles that and management and stuff wanting to meet me. And they asked me, do you have a script? We'd love to. I was like, I don't, I mean, oh, I'm writing one. Dream. And so then, then I was <laughs> they like, asked you, do you have a script? And then after a few months, I was, I was like, okay, I got to stop everything and write. And so that's what I'm doing. So you had a right really now. good motivation. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So that was that was the thing that said, okay, I need to do that. But I mean, if I didn't make those really bad test videos as a as a really early filmmaker with that, you know, like your camera that took tape, yeah, I would not have been able to like do that Seattle piece. It's called like you know, Dreamcatcher, and uh, and not have the confidence to like go into the future world or you know and so i think learning all these different aspects of filmmaking like makes me really confident as a like you know director and now as a writer i think this is the last frontier of yeah. f f filmmaking because it really is the hardest aspect it's because it's it, everything it's it not is. only the words yeah. but the actions that people do it's, how it's portrayed it's the blueprints in a way that you have to have it so precise and that's the thing that I'm learning myself. I mean, that I, it's, uh, you know, it's, um, racks your, like, your, like, your, like, brain. So, like, having a challenge like this, it would be, it's, it's actually fun mm -hmm. that you don't have to worry too much about, oh, gosh. He did the hardest what is, part for you. Yeah. He did the writing, guys. <laughs> You're fine. Like, <laughs> you know, you don't need to worry too much about, because it kind of, forms in its own way you can yeah. use as many lines as you want as like you know at, at least 10 lines or whatever yeah. and um but it's that sort of having this uh just urge to to want to say something you know and so now i'm just like full force hunkering down mm -hmm. writing and rewriting and rewriting and rewriting like all i'm doing is just rewriting constantly and learning constantly and um even as i'm sitting here like I have no choice, but my head, there's a little part of my brain that's oh, just that churning mm -hmm. on this film. It's it's something that you have to be living for, basically. And so this like this, this like you contest is such a great thing because not only are they, they, they learning from what they're doing, but me watching what they're doing off my script, I'm like, wow, that's interesting. <laughs> Their take on that yeah. is really cool. I think we're gonna get a lot of different perspectives. Exactly. And it's inspiring to hear your story because, you know, it's amazing to just be a cinematographer in its own you could do that for your entire life and not get bored but you don't have to just be that you can exactly. be that you can be a gaffer you can also be a writer you Definitely. can be a director and so just not putting any yeah don't put yourself in a box which is i think really cool because when i was looking at some of your older work and then um, i do want to come back to Dreamcatcher because it was beautiful loved it um but some of my favorites of your older stuff was like lawrence of morocco which i know is like five years ago maybe you made and then a short called tangents oh, and yeah. what I really enjoyed about those is your use of um really effects but in like with the camera mm -hmm. physically moving the camera yeah like using physical things um to portray the emotions and to portray the vibe of wherever you travel mm -hmm. to and you use a mixture of in-camera effects and also sound effects but also music and so has that always been kind of a, uh, a mode of, you know, showing what you're feeling? Is sound a big deal? Is, you know, how you're holding the camera? Well, one thing that I just always keep in my head is the, I love the orchestration of every aspect of filmmaking. And so I always think of it in my head as like the thing that fuses the music and the uh, visuals is this sound design. 
I think every piece should have sound design, unless there's a specific reason why there, why there isn't that will drive it. But if, I just think it like adds so much more. There's that like emotional, like, you know, you really hit it on the point. I work with cinematographers that totally get why I would grab the lens and shake it at a certain moment while they're filming. They'll be filming and I'll grab the lens and shake it. <laughs> Or I'll wipe the sweat off my my like forehead and wipe it on the lens. Really, I don't know, just weird stuff like that. Yeah. I'll grab like a, a plastic bag and put it over the lens to make it foggy really quick. Um, but it's just to like, because I, I I'm like editing in my head while I'm shooting, so I know exactly. And right when they're saying a certain line, it's like okay, boom, like right at that moment where uh, like in uh, tangents, there's a lot of like like really fluid like um um editing in that that like had to be really fluid and there's there's a scene where where they're on a beach and in the forest and it's cutting back and forth and they had to be in a specific spot which you know when i when i'm writing something you know these are films where you can see that i'm like experimenting and i'm like trying to figure out my my own like voice and that kind of stuff and so I was just thinking, what? How could you tell, like, like a marital like, uh, ar argument in a very entertaining way that's not just them yelling at each other and they're going. So then they go off on all these little tangents and they're at this little war. But you did this and you did that, and which is kind of like, a, and then it just and escalates this crazier. big thing. And so, uh, how do you show like? their memories and oh we were in the forest no we were at the beach no we we're in the forest on the beach blah, blah, blah. and it's just this battle back and forth and then and then one of them wins and the other and then you're at the beach all of a sudden you're just at the beach and then and then she says oh yeah but you remember this time when you did this at the grocery store randomly yeah, like uh, transport and then it, it to there flung, and now you're yeah. flinging a den and aisle of a grocery store with with like a little grocery cart flinging you know it's so it's this sort of like i love taking people on sort of unexpected like you know you know like you know tangents basically in a lot of my pieces and uh so that's where like a feature it's like very 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 different where you can't do that you 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 like the pacing can't have is the, very different exactly yeah. you can have this style but only in bursts you can't if if a whole film is like an hour and a half with this it's just like oh my god this is like <laughs> Be a little too much for me you yeah. know and this is like this is like a style that i've kind of like you know like you know coddled and like started this like now when i see this my like you know style everywhere it's kind of annoys me a little bit it's not like <laughs> no, oh my god but, it's, but, I it, mean, but and I think, there's a lot in your catalog to pull on i think if people need inspiration because i think the initial thought was oh i want to do this oh i have to learn after effects that's not the totally, case you can do yeah. a lot of in real life physical effects yeah. with the camera and a lot of times it's probably going to look better if you can figure that totally. out totally and i'm and i'm definitely like i love like practical uh, effects i think it's just so much better uh, and even if it doesn't look like, you know, like you look at like Michel Gondry or something and how he loves a lot of like, like, you know, practical stuff. And I'm inspired by all of his stuff because it's, 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 you know, tangible. And I'd, I'd rather have a guy in a monster suit than, than like a computer generated monster. Right. Because the like intangible thing can actually kill me. The, the <laughs> like true. a cartoon one is <laughs> like I'm not scared of that at all. It doesn't do anything for yeah. me. And so when like it, when it comes into like practical stuff in uh, Dream uh, Catcher, we had a scene where there's like a bunch of paper like uh, airplanes flying in the woods. We didn't have enough time to do all the ones I wanted in the woods, so we had probably like 50 of them flying around. And then we like added more in like you post. So then there was like a mixing of like in computer, like you generate. Oh, that's cool. so, 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 so I'm not against that, yeah. but I like to blend it in. So Definitely. it's kind of seamless or. Yeah. Um, and there's different ways you can blend it if, cause you always run out of time, right? Definitely. There's, there's nef never enough time in the day. Definitely. It seems like. And I think that's a big thing with directing is you're just a problem solver. Definitely. You and know? you know, there's like things like uh, another like example would be, at the very end of that piece, there's this giant f f f fireball floating like above her like head, which like which kind of represents her life, her passion, her her own like you know her own dreams, you know. And they said, "How are you gonna do that? Like, how are you gonna do this? Like, that doesn't it's like seems impossible." And I just said, "Like, well, 
and we had no res we had like a little resources as far as that kind of stuff. So I was like, well, I have a yoga ball in my room. I have a bunch of Christmas lights I can wrap up on this, wow. this, this, like this, like this, like yoga ball. I have this, all this fake snow from like in Christmas, like all this cotton and I wrapped it and it looked like a cloud in the air. And so that like lit the whole thing and it yeah. made it this, like this, like this, like, you know, tangible thing. And then we just added sort of this like flaming effect on it. And so it was both like mixed. And it probably other. interacts with the people better because then you have the light going on the yeah. subject's face. Yeah. And because there's a lot of things that you don't think about when you're doing it digitally. You have to worry about shadows. You have exactly, to worry about light. Exactly. And so, so mixing that's helpful. And so I think, you know, just looking around your house, your basement, your backyard, whatever, or your friends might have it, like all these resources that, that, that you think you might not be able to get, you can create them out of stuff that you never knew. And then if you just look at your resources, you're like, wow, what can that hand object to this like coat, how, how could this really crazy coat be like a part of the film? And you, know, and you can build your whole story based off of these things, you know? And so uh, with, with my feature, my first feature, the reason why we're not doing that is just because of it's so expensive. There's no way we can make it. And, that's one thing in my in my head that I that I learned. I was like, why didn't I think of that? Oh my god! Right. So, so, so they said to pick a few like new characters in one spot and think of the budget as you write because it's something yeah. that I have I can't like it's something that I I didn't think about before. I'm like, oh, like we can get money. It's like on your first feature, your first kind of things. Because a to... lot of times you're probably just like, oh, I want to do anything and everything, exactly. and you want to just put what's in your head. Um, but sometimes creative limits can spur even more awesomeness exactly. and more creativity. Totally. Yeah. And so in this script, there's a lot of practical stuff, a lot of really weird things that are really grandiose, but they're done in a way that I know that we can do it with right. stuff in my backyard if we need, you know right, what I mean? Right. So it's like, I'm really testing these waters on how much you can get away with, with, with like very little, you know? Um, so you see these films that are like s science fiction films that like have this grandiose idea, like there's another planet right above you and it feels very sci-fi and stuff, but the film costs like a hundred grand and that it was just this superimposed planet up there in the sky. So, the, but the, it was just a normal film, but it felt so much more because they just added this one little element in the sky. And it was just this little thing that made the film feel really sci-fi, really strange, really um, uneasy. And it was just really, that's kind of the stuff that I like to play with is just, uh, um, just what you have, you can do so much with already. I love so. that. In Dreamcatcher, you directed, wrote, and edited it. But um, what I saw, you know, just watching it on Vimeo and looking at the description, there were a lot of people involved, right? Yeah. So you have cinematographers, you have producers, and there's definitely a journey with that too, with working with people. Mm -hmm. In the beginning, when you're maybe making travel films, some uh, lower budget commercial, you can get away with doing it just you or maybe you and one or two other people. Um, and so how how was that journey, learning how to work with people? Um, was it exciting? Was it hard? Because, oh, now you need budget, right? And going back to the contest again, people, uh, you know, if they're the filmmaker, they're going to have to find actors. They're going to have to find people to work with them on this project. I think just going outside with your camera and walking around your block in your neighborhood or whatever and shooting the parks and, you know, sh like filming people in your parks if you want. I mean, just for practice or whatever. And, you know, filming a goose and a tree and stuff. I mean, that stuff is the first step, like right off the bat. Like my first pieces I ever did, I was too scared to even go outside. Like I think I, st I, st I started going out, out in the world like, like, like eight years ago. So I, so like in my, in my like early, like, you know, twenties, I didn't even go outside. I didn't interact with anybody. Um, I actually didn't, I leave the like house for a long time, literally. And so like, I would film little like insects in the in the backyard. I was I was filming like these little grasshoppers and a slug and <laughs> stuff like that. And then, and because I was experimenting with that, me hiding in my little hole, no one knew I like existed in the world. And I just put it onto Vimeo, and these like Italian uh, like producers messaged me and said, "We want you to come to like Italy to make wow. a travel film," and. I didn't believe it, of course. I was like, what the heck is going on? And 
And it, it's just because I tried something and I was experimenting and it was something a little bit different, you know, it was something new for people and say, wow, this is unusual, you know. Um, I don't know what they were thinking, like asking someone to like for the bugs well, and stuff. I'm sure but that it was, turned out great though. But it did really well. The piece, it was one of my first the, like Vimeo staff picks and wow. they, they uh, you know, and then that piece got me another project and that got another project and blah, 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 and so on. It's a know? lot of, it's building blocks, right? One Definitely. thing leads to the other and the next thing you'll Definitely. be on set with 10 other people. Definitely. <laughs> so it's like, you know, I definitely just did everything by myself at first. And then I had one other person or like a guide or something uh, to sh show me around. And then I had, you know, like one actor, someone that I would like a like a like a lifestyle kind of piece. And so that kind of got me like acclimated to working with someone. And, it, you know, you, you don't have to make them act right away. You can just test what the camera looks like from different angles on them. You can just make them walk around. It doesn't have to be amazing right off the bat. It's just kind of practice. And then after that, you're like, how could I make this more interesting? Oh, what if I do this, these, these, these angles, this and that? And how, what if I obstruct the lens? What if I move something in front of the lens? What if I, all these things. And then that sort of like evolves you to the next thing. And then, and then you know, when I started doing like your commercials, then it started getting into like actual crews which uh, was scary as hell. I was so scared because I was still really shy, awkward, didn't know what to do. And my first year commercial was like a $2 million uh, like in commercial. And wow. it, as a director? As a looking like, director. And so we all flew to like Warsaw and the uh, s cinematographer of The Great Unit Gatsby wanted to work with me. And so oh he was on set with me and I was, I walked into the set and I have a picture I can send you guys, but I walked to the set and I, he just handed me this big lens to look through, you know, one of those, I don't yeah, know what yeah. they're called. Like, oh, see how this looks. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And I you didn't know. You see the know, classic like Steven Spielberg pictures. I didn't know pictures. what the hell yeah. it was. I never saw one before in my life. And I just grabbed it and I looked through it and he was laughing like, oh, this guy doesn't know what he's doing. And then, and then he was such an inspiration. He was so yeah. cool. and. We had, it was like an 80 person crew or something like that. Wow. It was insane. Almost all of them only spoke Polish. Wow. And so, and we had all these actors that did not speak English. But it, it was just amazing because this like, all the like, all the like writers and the producers and just everyone involved were so s supportive and they really like you believed in me and my like, my like you, um, a vision and they just kind of let me be free to like, you know, learn in the process as well, you know, and kind of experiment. And uh, so on our like, outside of our like s s scheduled sh uh, sh shots that we did, Simon and I would, would run off into the bushes or in the grass with this massive, massive camera. And we would just sit there in the grass playing with <laughs> the grass blowing in the winds and, you know, trying to get that kind of like, you know, delicate, beautiful, airy, clean vibe to it. And so we would, so he was really fun to help me like that. And he just kind of inspired me to just keep pushing forward and that everything's kind of possible if I just keep um, trying and trying and trying and working toward it and kind of learning and stuff. And that's kind of where I just sort of like, would like watch a movie scene, which is kind of like this, like, you know, thing here is where you watch a movie scene, you're like, can I do that? And then you go out and you try to recreate it, whether it's just in your writing or you go out and you shoot scenes in your home w w with your friends trying to recreate the scene. And that really like, you know, helped me sort of get a grasp on like, hey, this is actually is possible. You can learn this stuff and actually make it work, you know, even if you don't have a lot of money or whatever, you know. What was the biggest thing that you learned from being on that crazy huge set on that shoot? I think the biggest thing I learned was just, you know, like, just, you know, collaboration really is like the key into making like a film work because you, 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 you uh, can make a film by yourself, but it's, it is more fun to get other people's like input and their like uh, ideas. So to, 
So, so, so to try to bring in friends and stuff to like film it with you just adds more to it. There's a lot more like, you know, you can have people do a lot more roles uh, as far as like lighting and sound and whatever. And you, can, you don't have to worry so much on everything else. You can focus on what exactly are you trying to say? What are the like, you know, the like, you know, actor is going to be feeling and doing the whole time. And, you know, you, you can really hone in on that specific emotional like story like element of the film you know um and so the more people you have that are on like board and like and like and like you believe in you i think the kind of better uh the like you know it, it'll be for you in the long run you know a video on you actually i don't know if you made it directed a, a colorful life Did oh you yeah, make that? yeah 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 okay. So it does a really good job of like telling your story and what you've had to overcome. Yeah. Um, and it was so good and so powerful, but can you kind of talk a little bit to how art got you through times of adversity and times yeah. of, um, you know, feeling maybe alone or uh, just feeling down? I was extremely poor when I was, when I was young and I definitely had, uh, a lot of just like insecurities. I mean, we all do even like, you know, today, everybody, I mean, you like do your whole life basically, you know what I mean? I mean, it's nervous for, for, for me to be in front of the camera basically yeah. anyway, but I would sit inside for like months at a time and just watch movies constantly. And I would literally pull the, the like TV up to my bed, put a blanket over the TV and me with like your know, headphones on, closing watch off everything. the whole world. Yeah. And I would watch films like, you know, uh, Mulholland Drive and films that were just like way out there and doing stuff that I've never even thought could be possible. And so, you know, making films to me, like in any aspect, whether it could be like travel films or something like that, I, I want to create that like I I emotional aspect, you know, to me. And so if I'm going through a fearful time or something, you'll see it in one of my pieces, you'll see there's that like emotion in it and it kind of gets it out of me and it like forces it out of me but then it also kind of creates like e empathy with other people and so people who are like going th you know through that they they sort of feel it too and they, they get inspired by it and it kind of shows the more like beautiful aspects of the world even if you're like you know like you know sad or like down on the world you know and you can kind of still bring a little life and inspire people to get out and just make anything you know what i mean well heck yeah any last words for the people out there who are maybe on the edge oh i don't know if i should submit any any advice for them to just hit that join button join collective start the contest it could be you winning these prizes it's anyone's game in this yeah. because it's like i think every every like buddy every single person has a story to tell and that's something that's that's like inspiring to me. And everybody, everyone has a voice, whether they think they do or not. And I think that's all it takes is just to pick up the camera, do something, try it. Like, and if it doesn't work that first, you're like, I don't like it so much. Just try it again. Like, keep like working on like your craft. And all it takes is you know planning and you know making sure that you have what what you want to say down, and then to be like you're passionate. And that's the only thing that really that really matters is is to be passionate about what you're doing and, you know, not having fear about what, what I think because I'm going to be excited to watch every yeah. single one of them anyway, you know, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, well, make sure to sign up at collective.lacy.com to check out your script, um, to get going, get those ideas going. Just a reminder, uh, the contest opens May 6th. It closes on June 10th, and that's when the judging will start. Sounds so intense. That's when the judging will start. Uh, and then the winner is announced June 17th with up to $10,000 worth of prizes on the line. But it's not just about the prizes. Uh, you know, every month we have new contests here at Collective, so it's really about pushing your limits on what you can do. It's about developing new filmmaking skills and doing it with people who are here to help. Uh, we're all kind of on the same same journey. So whether you are listening to the audio version of this or you're watching the video on the Collective YouTube channel, make sure to subscribe. Just hit the follow button to stay up to date because every single month we're giving you updates on new contests, the winners. So stick around.